Oh, we live. What's good, people? It is currently five minutes past 8 p.m. UK time. Monday, the 8th of April, 2024. Welcome to another episode of The Game, which is a free weekly webinar covering everything and anything. Web3, financials, AI, tech, fundamentals, with a particular focus on reports. Today, I believe, is the first ever Jay Johnson's AI special. There's been lots of technically speaking. There's been lots of technically speaking Jay Johnson takeovers. In fact, Sunday was, as I had something really important to do. But today, I feel like is a, is a special one where we've got our... Swiss Army and I have come here to talk, talk to you guys about artificial intelligence and how you can apply it to your investing, trading, asset management, and I'm sure he's got some 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 automation game for you guys. Um, let me just do the quick intro, and then I'll give my my dog the the uh, the limelight. Before I do so, let me make them co-host. Jay, you are now co-host. Um, Keish, I will also make you a co-host just in case. Make co-host. Fantastic. Let's also make sure everything's working on the YouTube. Let's just get that all checked out. Let's get all of that. Make sure that's all gravy. And then we will get started. We got some new, we got some we got some new faces in the room. Sweepy D say hello. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes me too. We live, we live, we live. Okay, cool. Everyone's mic is working. All right, let's get started with the intro. So, if you don't know who we are, we are Blockchain Sensei. We're a black and Asian owned Web3 solutions and financial literacy company. We solve most problems in crypto and we can educate people across the board when it comes to financial literacy. We're not financial advisors. We do not sense to be perceived as re received as financial advisors, but we do definitely financially educate. And we're called Blockchain Sensei, but really we should be called Blockchain Practitioners because we're in the trenches every single day. I was actually speaking to um, a homie of mine who I actually have a lot of respect for, um, who's actually got uh, a degree or wrote some kind of university paper on DeFi. But respectfully, this person had never used Aave before. And, you know, I showed them Aave and they like the idea of over collateralized loans. But anyway, we run, we run th three free webinars a week. We do the game, which is every Monday, 8 p.m. till half nine UK time since 2020. Um, our in-person Createch Manchester uh, workshop will be coming back soon, I promise. We just need to find a new location as it's now oversubscribed and too many people want to come and we need, we need a better secret location. Fridays, NFT Fridays, uh, non-fungible tokens, and Sundays is our trading and charts show. Go to superjoy.com slash blockchain sensei um, for everything and anything you need, including but not limited to our free Telegram, the free um, link to the Zoom webinars, and our Dojo subscription service, which have... Yes, 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 yes. Look at this. Are you ready? If you wanted the dojo for the previous prices, all those have gone now. The dojo is now £150 a month for the next five people. Um, let's read out this copy real quick. There's a reason why, in fact, <laughs> let's get the disclaimer out first. So, disclaimer terms and conditions, all content is for education, information, and entertainment purposes only. And it should not be considered as investment advice or recommendation to buy, sell, hold any assets, nor place any trades. Please always do your own work, guys. Research. Mm -hmm. Our content is intended and should only be used for informational use only. It's very important to do your own analysis before making any investments which should be based on your own individual circumstances. You should always take independent professional advice from a professional advisor. Lanrai, are you a professional financial advisor, homie? No. Keish, Sweepy, Mark, Jijan San, Adam. Alex Codlin, any of you guys, financial advisors? 
No, sir. So we do not intend to be perceived or received as financial advisors. Alternatively, independently research and verify all and any information you may find on our show that you may wish to rely upon, whether you wish to make an investment decision or otherwise. All investments come with what, guys? Exactly. All investments come with RASK, okay? With a RASK, right? So please always do research. You know what I mean? But iterate. Again, not financial advisor. I do not intend to be perceived or received as financial advisors. No financial advisors inside the place. However, we're working in collaboration with several accredited advisors outside the place, outside of these webinars. If you're unable to mitigate your risk, let us know immediately so we can refer you to an accredited financial advisor. Now, let me just quickly advertise why you guys need to be in the dojo. So the dojo is your unfair shortcut to... <laughs> now, we don't promise 400x profits, but... If there was one place where, where you were to get three figure profits, aka 100x plus, it would be the dojo. There's a reason why 99% of people never become rich in crypto. The markets are constant competition. You don't make money out of thin air. Every dollar or pound sterling or euro that you make, you had to take it from someone. But guess what? Every time you lost the dollar, someone took it from you. If you're like most people, you're entering the market as a complete beginner, you have no advantage. You have no edge, like a lone wolf fighting for scraps. You're following random YouTubers and anonymous Twitter accounts hoping to find the next 1,000x, the next five coins that are going to 100x, without re realizing that you were merely exit liquidity. These people were there in before you, and you're buying it, so you're buying it off them and they can sell. Okay? Influence won't tell, they'll tell you what to buy, but they won't tell you when to sell. To make money inside a competitive environment, you need an edge, a distinctive advantage. You need to become a professional or follow a professional. Do you think you'd make money if you sat shoulder to shoulder with a Goldman Sachs trader for a whole month? Do you think you'd make money around me or Jay or Lanry or Mr. Harding if you're around us for, for, for a whole month? Enter Mr. Harding, who's been personally trained by one of the top investing firms on the planet. That's our CEO, Fadlan Effendi. That's me, and Jay Johnson, whose combined decade of trading and investing experience has recently accumulated into a 4,000% return on a single trade. Won't tell you what that is, but Doja members will know. We're going to take you by the hand and show you not only how to play the crypto game, but how to win it. Welcome to the dojo. This isn't a university class. You don't just get to sit and do nothing. We're going into the trenches and you're coming with us so that we can make money so when we make money, you make money. You also lose money when we lose money, but that's why we've got mis mis risk mitigation. Here's what you're going to get inside the dojo. Daily live trading calls. Inside the operation of a six-figure account as we grow to seven figures in this bull run. Early access to ground-level investment opportunities. Free money airdrop opportunities. Exclusive NFT mints. High-level hot stock marketplace. Copy and paste Forex trades with our number one student, Big Ups uh, Yusuf. Instant market updates. It's crazy. Okay, so let me go back to the Zoom for a second, right? Let me just focus on the Zoom. But before, before I, wait, what's going on? What's going on? Share this tab stat. Okay, cool. My back, right? I'm, I'm going to pin myself for a second, and then I'm going to give it over to Jay. Right, I've pinned myself so I can look deep into all your souls, okay? I have recently invested 12.5% of my entire net worth into access and information alone. Rich people invest money in which three things? information access and assets so i didn't get any assets directly i will god willing be getting some assets and assets they're going to multiply and get me back my 12.5 percent i've also today invested eight percent of my net worth in private equity in a non-web free business mm, web free kind of because they use ai and they're accepted to crypto payments but for the most part a web 2 subscription service i know right it's crazy web 2 right but it's a cash flow generating business and i'm looking to get five to seven x on my private equity in the next two years god willing some of you guys don't take enough risk right and you don't invest your money in the right places so i know dons that have ten thousand pounds sterling in cash but they will not pay a hundred pounds well, 150 pounds to subscribe to the dojo and they won't pay one-on-one -on -one for me and jay's time or keisha's time but they want free information it's quite crazy and can i tell you this one of my biggest regrets is not investing enough into my brain because my two biggest assets well three biggest assets are health my brain and my connections if i lost everything today in terms of my digital assets i could make it all back within a year or two through my knowledge and through my connections so bear that in mind remember 
um, your brain is worth more than Bitcoin. Let me just leave it at that. Your brain is worth more than Bitcoin itself. Um, over to uh, our Swiss Army Knife, Jay Johnson. Okay, great stuff, GM, GM. For anyone who doesn't know, that's a crypto slang, which means good morning, because of course it's always morning somewhere in the crypto markets, which are open 24 seven. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, definitely um, very honored and feel very privileged to have this opportunity to share my insights. Um, a lot of which have been gained in quiet solitude, staring at screens and charts. And of course, uh, also a large percentage has been gained in the network of blockchain sensei and um sure can sound so i feel like we can we can pretty much get straight into it we're talking here about cryptocurrency web3 and ai but let's go right to the foundation of of where all of this began because one thing i like to remind myself is that complexity is the killer of all growth so let's make this as simple as possible right so that all our moms for example could understand so that our five-year-old sisters, nieces, whatever, they could understand, right? So as far as I'm concerned, it all starts off with Web3. But before we truly understand Web3, we need to logically think, we're at Web3 now, so what was Web1 and what was Web2? Okay, so Web1 is me being in this room here and being able to send other members of Blockchain Sensei or other members of people in this very Zoom room, a message saying, hey, how are you? Or anything I want to write. Web two is something similar to a notice board, right? A digital notice board where people can put up information, text, media, you know, and you can actually do some really interesting things with it. For those of you who haven't clocked on, I'm just describing the internet, right? Which is web two. You can do some pretty interesting things with it. This is a digital notice board, right? That is maintained by centralized servers and entities. For example, Google, Amazon, all that, all those um, yeah, tech giants. Web three is essentially the same as web two, like a digital notice board. However, it is not tied or maintained by centralized server entities. Now, what this means is that it's a lot more difficult to cancel people or to take things down, right? Now, of course, this means this is a true representative of the wide scope of opinions and ideologies that are out there in the world and potential solutions for problems that are out there in the world. Okay, cool. So next up, we have cryptocurrency, right? Now, what is crypto? Well, I'm actually quite shocked by how many people... Um, ah, okay, it's just Mr. Harding. I was like, who is this? Mate. Hello there, Mr. Harding, CEO of Blockchain Sensei, right behind me, having a, oh, you already had that. <laughs> well, nice. getting through. Getting through. Well, let me see. well, you enjoy your meal. Um, yeah, it's, it's out of the way for you. So, where was I? I was at cryptocurrencies, right? Crypto is such an interesting word nowadays because, from my experience, the majority of people don't actually know what crypto means or stand for. Crypto is the cryptographic encryption of one's identity so that transactions can be made anonymously via a decentralized network known as a blockchain. I know what you're thinking. Very catchy, right? <laughs> I don't know why they don't call it that instead of just crypto. But really and truly, at the crux, this is what crypto is. It's the cryptographic encryption of one's identity to transact. So as far as I'm concerned, really, truly, I don't see centralized exchanges as crypto to the core. You know, being a cryptographic and cryptocurrency purist as I am, I do not actually see these centralized exchanges as being 100% cryptographic because, of course, one has to dox your, their identity. Now we move on to AI or more specifically, right, large language models. Now, I was first put onto ChatGPT in 2024 now and about when it first came out actually so around late 2022 my older brother told me about it and then i met uh i met a colleague of mine uh his name is nomadic aka ali big ups to him uh so my brother introduced me and if it wasn't for my friend nomadic i would not have become a professional right so ai or more specifically llms which stands for large language model right large because it's pretty it's pretty, it's pretty big in terms of what's going on on the back end. 
language because this is an AI you can interact with using language. Before artificial intelligence, or before this most recent boom, one could only really interact with it using high-level code, right? Or let's say, for example, um, artificial intelligence was in fraud detection mechanisms and banks or Spotify algorithms to determine what playlist you might like, right? Now is the age of the LLM, which is the large language model, right? And this is the ability to interact with an AI using text. Now, so now we all know, I guess, the foundational um, definitions. Let's go right into, into how we can use these technologies and how these technologies will inevitably be used moving forward in the future. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start sharing my screen. And I'm going to take us to an LLM known as Claude. Now, Claude is an uh, exceptional LLM. In my opinion, it's actually better than ChatGPT um, simply because, well, for many reasons. Firstly, it speaks a bit more like a human being. Um, let's go to Claude.ai. It speaks a bit more like a human being. There's a larger token window. The token window is essentially how many tokens one can put into this window right here. And by token, I mean potentially two words, potentially a word and uh, a punctuation mark. Essentially, it's the it's the sort of bits that a uh, that an LLM breaks up long bits of text into so that it can understand things. Right. So we've got that. So what is how how can we use this? Right. What what is what is useful? Well, the first thing I wanna I wanna explain to people is that the only limitation, right, or the, the biggest limitation is really just the imagination itself. So let's say I want to figure out what is cryptocurrency, AI, and, you know, um, and Web3 all about. What's the first thing I can write? Explain cryptocurrency, Web3, and AI, LLMs, right? because AI is a very broad term, right? Whenever you hear AI, for me now being, you know, a professional in the space for over a year now, I, I, whenever I hear AI, I'm like, but how specific are you? Like there are many different kinds of AIs. Do you mean, they most probably mean LLMs, but this is, a, this is sort of key distinctions I look for just when betting through what sort of content is worth consuming or not. Explain cryptocurrency, Web3 and AI LLMs to me like I'm 18 years old. Now I've just taken 18 years old as an example because that is the age at which, you know, us here in the UK, you become uh, an adult officially, legally, but really you can take any age. In fact, I use, uh, I edit this age quite often, depending on who I'm talking to. I have younger siblings and sometimes I'm, I'm writing, okay, explain it to me like I'm eight years old. And every single time without fail, it's always, been a significant help for my younger siblings to actually understand whatever concept I'm trying to explain, whether that's quantum physics or, you know, any form of engineering or mechanics. So like I'm 18 years old, another useful tip is you can simply just increase the age, right? And it will just keep on explaining it in slightly more complex ways. Now you can be more granular with your prompt, but essentially just increasing the age, right, can provide you with an entire course on any topic you wish, right? Like I'm 18 years old. So let's see what this is gonna give us right here. Sure, try to explain these, these topics in a way that's easy to understand for an 18 year old, okay? So cryptocurrency is a digital form of money that exists only online. I love that. I think this is a beautiful uh, time to segue into the fallacy of the ledger and cryptocurrencies being stored on any sort of physical device. It's just a glorified USB. In fact, USBs are actually more useful than that because it because it, it all it does is it just displays um, it just displays a private key or a seed phrase. This whole concept of cryptocurrency being on a physical hardware is literally just a psyop, which stands for a psychological operation. It's just a, a, it's really a marketing stunt that's gone completely out of control. Um, okay, I'm just going to charge my laptop here. Before. Okay. Just to add on to what Jay was saying while he's doing that, <clears throat> it's, it's a marketing play, but they marketed it kind of well by calling it the ledger because it's just a record. 
So it's a little bit of a little play there because it's obviously not got your crypto on it, but it's got a little record of it. <laughs> so they, they, they sold it. Yeah, they really did. That's a, an example of exceptional marketing. Um, kind of like those Coca-Cola cans with just people's names on it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you can see that a lot of people don't even understand crypto or cryptographic encryption of identity, right? So it's not controlled by any government or bank, but instead uses cryptography, fancy maths and computer coding. That's a, I think that's an ideal way to explain cryptography to an 18 year old, right? So it uses cryptography, fancy maths and computer coding to secure transactions and control the creation of new units. Bitcoin is the most well-known crypto, but there are thousands of others, of others like Ethereum, Litecoin, and Dogecoin. So the key ideas behind cryptocurrency are, of course, decentralization, no centralized entities, public records of transactions, right, and like a, just like a ledger, and security, right, provided by the cryptography. So instead of a bank keeping track of your money, the transactions are recorded on a public ledger called a blockchain. Um, really and truly, blockchain technology is every accountant's, uh, accountant's uh, dream, but the way it's been used in the real world is, um, is interesting because now it's basically become every accountant's nightmare. <laughs> but really and truly, it's basically meant to eradicate the need for you to actually do any serious form of accounting because everything is recorded on the blockchain which is a ledger of all transactions. Now, Web3 is the, is, is the idea of a new decentralized version of the internet, right? The current internet, Web2, as I explained at the start, is mostly controlled by big tech companies, Google, Facebook, Amazon, right? Web3 aims to create more transparent user-controlled internet. We own our data and digital assets. So you can create things like website apps, um, online services, and uh, yeah, many other sort of decentralized apps, AKA dApps. So that's, uh, that's the beauty of Web3. Now, AI, or LLMs, or large language models, are advanced artificial intelligence systems. They can understand, generate, and analyze human-like text. So, for example, Claude, <laughs> I was about to say it myself, I am not an example of an LLM, although people often think I am an AI. Um, <laughs> I'm an example of an LLM created by a company called Anthropic. And this is, of course, Claude here, right? And even... Let's say we go to the biggest player, ChatGPT. It's essentially a, a, a chatbot that is capable of generating information, right? Generating text. It's been trained on previous amounts of data, and it can also transform the output it gives you based on the data you give it, right? And that's precisely what the GPT in ChatGPT stands for. Generative, because it generates text retrained because it was trained on data sets before it ever got in front of you and transformer because it can transform its outputs based on the data and information you provide to it right and all it does is it chats and it does all those three things on repeat right but of course it's certainly more sophisticated that's just an extremely high high level of it so llms are trained on massive amounts of data books websites database right and they essentially have learned how to communicate naturally. Now, the reason I say Claude is actually overall superior to ChatGPT is because it has a, well, it actually has a greater, it, it writes with a greater degree of brevity in my personal experience. And this has also been corroborated on multiple forums. Um, it, What's brevity? Brevity is basically, hmm, do you know what? Let's ask, let's ask Claude. <laughs> Describe brevity. It's basically the ability to speak like uh, uh, essentially clearly and 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 to a degree concisely. So describe brevity. Yeah, exactly. So brevity is the quality of being brief and concise and using few words to express much, right? So one of the things I always aim to do whenever I speak is I always aim to speak a little but say a lot, right? There are a lot of people that uh, you know, speak a lot, but say very little. I choose to be in the complete opposite camp, right? So Claude has the greatest, uh, or, or definitely has a higher degree of brevity compared to ChatGPT. That can be quite wishy-washy, right? It can be quite uh, extra. Um, and Claude also speaks a bit more like a human from, from my understanding, you know what I mean? Which is, which is very important if you're, let's say, using these LLMs for anything in the world. 
right? You want it to sound at least human. So the key behind LLMs are machine learning, which is where you take data from, well, you get you get data from very extensive data banks, right? You then put it through some natural language processing and you then scale it so that it can be trained on more data and provide better results. So for example, let's say someone here is on their phone. Let's say I'm on my phone, right? I'm just, someone's asking me, okay, what do you, what do you, um, what would you like for dinner? And I'm like, I don't know, we're in the UK, so let's go with fish and chips, right? As soon as I type fish, right, there is essentially a record of all the people that have written the word fish, right, in a data bank somewhere. And then I would write the word and, right? Now, now there is a certain percentage of, of people who have ever written fish on their keyboard and have followed it with and. And that percentage is relatively high compared to, let's say, any other um, uh, conjunction, right? So when I write just those two words, fish and, there's a massive data bank that has said the vast majority of the time, well, at least here in the UK, whenever someone writes fish and then and, nine times out of 10, they're going to finish it off with chips. And there's a super large data bank that exists to corroborate this information, right? So that we actually know mathematically that there's a very high likelihood this person is going to write chips. That's essentially what AI and LLMs are. They've been trained on crazy amounts of data and they are now in a position where they can predict to a degree what people are going to say and then provide an output that they know is highly likely to be satisfactory. Okay, cool. So now we understand that Web3 cryptocurrencies and LLMs are essentially the future and they are transforming society and life as we know it all over the world. Let's let's understand what they're not capable of. So whilst they are very capable, they're not sentient and have clear limitations, but they can be extremely useful or incredibly useful tools and assistance for all sorts of language related needs. OK, great. So I guess I want to make this slightly interactive, less of a lecture. So has anyone got any questions so far? Okay, well, that silence was certainly deafening. <laughs> so <laughs> I was going to say, can we look at some of the projects that are actually using AI? So uh, like Wretch, like yours and like Render. Absolutely. Give people examples. So let's go on to Coin Market Cap, right? Which is a great, uh, oof, first thing first, we need to get into dark mode. Um, cool, let's go into Fetch AI, which is an exceptional exceptional um, project you can see here on the daily it's up 2.4 percent volumes up 28 percent i'm about to tweet some at day how day very day appreciate the heads up well for any of those interested in content that is not safe for work please refer to mr hardens twitter well it's not gonna be on my twitter it's gonna be some blockchain sensei twitter oh even better it's going to be company-wide representing <laughs> <laughs> All of us. Let's get it. So we've got the website here. Let's go on to Fetch AI. Or better still, let's just go on to their docs, right? Uh, Docs.fetch.ai. And you can see here, they've got what are called AI agents, right? If you look on their main website, build, deploy, and monetize AI integrations. Sounds pretty cool. Okay, you've got some code there. Transform your legacy systems to be AI ready without changing your existing APIs. Now, this is actually amazing and actually relates to a client I had a meeting with today. I don't know why I didn't put two and two together to offer this as a solution. What's an API for the people? An API is, oh, Crypto Boss has raised his hand as well. Uh, an API is application programming interface. What is an API? I get that right. Application proof. Wow. Okay. I'm surprised I got that right. Um, but yeah, it's basically a way for um, applications and websites to talk to each other. Servers, you know, uh, data banks, um, you know, queries to essentially talk to each other. Yes, Crypto Boss, you've got your hand up. Hello. You hear me? 
loud and clear, crypto boss. What's good? Talking about agents. So, do you know about God mode? About God mode? Agent? I do indeed know about God mode on Chat GPT. That is a. Uh... <laughs> That's an interesting one. And in fact, in fact, tell us a, a bit about God mode for those of the people who don't know, please. So basically, you can, depending on what you're doing, you can actually have autonomous agents working in the background whilst you're doing other work and doing tasks and coming up with, with ideas, answering questions for you while you're doing completely something else. I'm going to. Um, I must say, I got into this because of a guy called Mr. Harding, and then I went down the rabbit hole, <laughs> and I, these are some of agents. I have kind of dropped off a bit, but I need to, I need to catch up. But I'll send you that info so you can see what I was doing. Much appreciated, Crypto Boss. Keen to see that. So you can see here, we've got a platform to connect multiple integrations to create new services. Okay, so back to the concept of an API. An API is basically, in fact, let's practice right what we're being taught. What's the next? What's the next uh, prompt I'm going to put into Claude? Explain an API to me like I'm 18 years old. Right, and the reason I'm showing you all this is so that you get in the habit of doing it yourselves. Because people often are like, "How do I approach an LLM?" Just like you'd approach a person. Explain an API to me like I'm 18 years old. And one thing I like to do, even though Claude is quite concise, sometimes I still have to like concisely, right? Because you know, you don't want a long, want some long uh, output. That's just, you know, too much time. And that's what we're trying to save here. So concisely explain an API to me like I'm 18 years old. So an API application programming interface is like a messenger that allows for different software programs to talk to each other and share information or services. It's a set of rules that defines how one application can communicate and interact with another. For example, when you use your phone to check the weather app, right? the app itself doesn't have the weather data. Instead, it uses an API passed, provided by a weather service. So it receives that information, and then it displays it to you. Right? In fact, I think APIs can only, only do, um, I believe it's called CRUD in APIs. In API calls, the only four sort of, yeah, the only four sort of, um, wait, was it? Yeah, the only really four sort of, um, kind of requests that can be that can be made with API calls. The the acronym is CRUD, and that stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. Right, something I learned when I was uh, studying some low level software development. So APIs act as an intermediary, allowing for different programs to exchange data and functionality without having to know the inner workings. And once you combine an API with an AI, then you basically supercharge what's capable, right? And that can lead to significantly enhanced productivity. Okay, great. So let's go into, let's go back into Fetch AI. So we can see here, sky scanner, right? which is used to, of course, scan the sky and what planes are going. Discord, OpenAI, Yahoo Finance, Slack, WhatsApp, Google Calendar. These are integrations that can be created, right, thanks to the AI agents um, provided by Fetch AI. So just on this, now's a perfect segue onto the Block Twin Sensei Twitter for the dirt that I just posted. Let's see some dirt. Let's get it. We've got Twitter, blockchain. In fact, I'm just going to quickly... I'm going to initially stop sharing my screen because uh, I have a couple Twitter accounts. Okay. So let's go over here. Let's go to the Blockchain Sensei Twitter account. Okay, I'm going to start sharing my screen again. Here we go. What's the recent tweets? What is that? Uh, from profile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me scroll down. Is it this? So got render better gala and basically anything that revenues that has major vc backing mainly coinbase and a16z tiger global shouldn't have put out my idea that was a bit of a bad one there but anyway value investing for crypto has it got increasing revenue or users does does fetch have increasing revenue and increasing users oh yeah it does. absolutely uh, has it been backed by three or more successful vcs oh yeah it has has it got three or more major partnerships that can increase user growth and revenue Sky scanner, mm, open AI. Mm. Oh, yeah, it does. Slow DCA in. 
Uh, what date was this tweet? It doesn't quite show it, but uh, let's go to the, the next image. Next image. Sold all my ETH from BTC in October, but very public about that. Not buying BTC until 20K and ETH until 800. What price is Bitcoin now? Right now, Bitcoin is at... 64K. 64. Okay. Well, well, actually, no, this was just what it was when I saved it. It's actually about 61. Okay. So that oh, was sorry, 71.8. Buying Bitcoin at 20K was a good decision. Okay, fair enough. Um... Very simple. Use the weekly RSI and fear and greed. If greed is high and RSI is high, sell. When fear is crazy high and RSI is crazy low, buy things institutions use and VCs back. Do institutions use things like Fetch AI? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, they do. Ah, it could be the best project and the best utility your friend told you about. But if there's no VC backing it, it's not going to get 5 mil or 2 billion inflows and or recover from a 90% dip. People are always trying to find the next big winner when the VCs who control the funds have done all the research. Let's go to the next next image. Oh, look at that. That's a receipt of uh, the 14th of the 6th, 2022, of a purchase of Fetch. Let's go to Trading View and see what the price of Fetch was then. Okay, let's take a look. Price of Fetch on the 14th of June, 2022, at 2.30. Okay, let's go to Fetch. 14th of June. Four hour chart. 2022. Let's see what we've got here. Damn, this is a, quite a while ago. 14th of June, 2022. I'm going to go on the daily. 14th of June, 2022. Let's see 14th of June would have been here. I'm just going to try and make a vertical line. So we can look at it on this day. So like bang right here. Mm -hmm. Let's see exactly what price that would have been. Um, make a horizontal line. Make a yeah, yeah, horizontal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like to do it like this, kind of like a, a sniper target. <laughs> yeah. and then you could have said that this was a sniper target, but you know. Um, and then what? What kind of return did that do? Look, oh look. wow! Look at that. that puppy whip. Holy moly! Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Let's see. We've got the sniper buy here, and to today's price, that is two thousand four hundred and about ninety percent upwards. Remember. Blockchain sensei and Michael Harden do not know what they are talking about. Remember that. Just saying. Past okay. results do not represent potential future outcomes. Not at all. But sometimes, you know, coincidentally, we say things on Blockchain Sensei webinars. When would we have done a webinar on this, actually? Let's go to the Twitter page and uh, see if we've, we've put that out there. Let's go to the next tweet image. Mm -hmm. That was us talking about render again. Okay. Uh, there we go. What day was this out? Two years ago. Two years ago, we did a whole episode on Fetch AI. So that was awesome. The game is on us, but the execution is on you. I don't know many people that give out two thousand plus returns in two years for free on a webinar. Free, really. I just, I just, I just don't know. Um, but yeah, obviously, pay whatever you're paying for whatever subscriptions that you're paying for that you feel are worth more than paying for subscriptions to Blockchain Sensei Dojo. Um, if you want these kind of returns now, not many of them are going to be public. They're going to be in the Dojo. Um, let's go to the Dojo and show people what the Dojo is. So uh, gun road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get to the super joy. So, so if you're looking for those kind of returns. Um, then unfortunately you're gonna have to join us in the dojo. We'll give you a little bit of uh, information on the dojo. So the dojo is basically a space where, and it explains. We're gonna explain it here, right? You have to understand that 99 percent of people will never become rich in crypto ever, ever, ever. That's because they're trying to be an expert without talking to an expert. Not saying that we're experts, but I'm saying that we have a very large team of almost 20 people basically doing this on a full-time basis <laughs> yeah. versus you just trying to do it on your own. Now, 
if you have a leak in your house, do you just try and fix it yourself or do you call a plumber? Plumber. Most people call a plumber, right? Okay. If you have broken your car and the engine has literally fallen out, like most people's financial situations, <laughs> do you try and put the engine in back yourself or do you go to a, a technician? Technician, mechanic, straight Mechanic. Away. <laughs> so for some reason, people don't do that with their finances. They don't go to a mechanic or a technician that has got proven results. So that's what we're, we do. Like, we're here to, to help you out, right? Luckily for me, I've been trained by a director from JP Morgan. Luckily for Ninja, he's managing a family fund um, and you get to see him managing a six-figure account. So we give you access to early ground floor investing opportunities like returns like Fetch and probably more, probably 50x returns, free money, airdrop opportunities, exclusive NFT opportunities, high-level stock market plays, copy and paste Forex trades, uh, instant market updates, comprehensive fundamental and technical analysis, exclusive access to early research findings, all for the whopping price of £3,800 a month. No, that's the price it should cost you, but it actually costs you just £150 a month. Now, if you want 20x gains or 5x gains and you're not willing to pay £150 a month, then uh, I would probably say you're better off looking elsewhere. But you're going to be looking for a very long time. Yeah, and we have looked. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's that's a little bit on the dojo. Um, let's put the dojo link in the chat so people can subscribe if they want to. Just, you know, sometimes we put out our receipts. Very important to get those get those receipts. And, of course, do your own due diligence. If you have any questions, let us know. But... <laughs> Wait, hold on. You see, you see in chat, early bird caught the worm. <laughs> yeah, so I caught it when the dojo was 50, 50 pounds. So don't don't there's only five spots left at 150. They're gonna go. And once they go, price goes up to 500. Right? There's a popular saying nowadays floating around. It goes, yesterday's price is not today's price, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it does not. So we warned you, don't cry about it when it's too expensive later, because there were people that were saying it was too expensive before. Guess what? It's gonna get more expensive. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, let's look, take a look at Renda. Yeah, it's a great shout. So, let's go into Renda, which is again another project we spoke about two years ago. It's pretty popular now. Yep, it's number 34 in terms of market cap. What kind of gains has it done in the last year? What kind of gains has it done in the last year? Let's go on to trading deep. Let's see, I got Renda right here. In the last year, it's still a relatively new coin. Oh, I think this is it was only this is only when it was listed on Coinbase, right? Yeah. Okay. So well, let's that was only it was only listed on Coinbase in 24. Was it out before then? Yeah, it was definitely okay, out before I was gonna yeah, say. Wait, 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 before then it was out. Yeah, 100 percent Literally that post that I, I put on Twitter. I'll get it on the deck screen now. I'll just see. The first time we mentioned it in the chat is in the public chat, not even in our, our private members chat, was. Is that the correct render? Mm, it appears so. It's got, wait, 3.7. Let me just make sure. That's a, I mean, the market cap looks fairly accurate. That's a well, pull not, on. Not the ticker. Oh. Mm, do you know what I'll do? Here's one thing you can always do. You can always just copy the code. The ticker, the ticker is RNDR. Yeah. Oh, right. RNDR. Oh, yeah. This isn't even a correct name. And the RNDR. So it was render itself. So oh, there we go. Did I say 14th of June then? No, that was a, that was, I think that was a, wait, that was a wrong asset. Yeah. So really yeah, we said, mentioned it 14th of June 2022. 14th of June 2022. Okay, let's see what that was. 14th of June. That would have been. Yeah. Oops. What about what I mean? 14th of June. Yeah, it was 14th of June. That was uh, that was quite a nice low buy. It's on to the line. Yes, sir. 
Fuck yeah, man like Mike does not like anything but 10 extra toes. Let's see. What gains these would have given us? Till today's price, that would have been over the 2,000 mark again. About 2,284%. Healthy. Healthy. Yeah. Yeah. That's about right. But remember, you can pay all your financial advisors, your investment managers, whatever, whatever you want to pay them for, whatever returns you want to pay them for. But, you know, don't pay us £150. It's not worth it. It's not. Because we're not financial advisors, so you can't pay us for a financial advisor anyway. We're just enthusiasts of this magic internet money craze. It's yep. clearly a fad. Definitely won't be transformational for life, finance, tech, and human society as a whole. So let's let's give them the inside game of how we find these kind of products. So go to Coin Market Cap. So this is all we've got to do, and then you go to categories on the homepage. The homepage, and then categories just next to cryptocurrencies on the left. Down, yeah, down, 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 in the down. middle left, yeah, 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 yeah. And then let's look for AI. Let's see if there's scroll down. Oh, is this all the AI ones? Yeah, yeah, there we go. And here's all your projects doing AI. So, you probably don't want to go for the ones with the biggest market caps, probably go for things a little bit smaller. So, and then do your own research. Oh, lossless, interesting. As a, someone who's also a sound engineer, lossless essentially just means um, a, a transference of, of information that preserves all the information. So there's a lossy form of data transfer and there's lossless. Lossless is superior because you actually maintain uh, the quality of that information. So that already stands out to me because I like the name of that. And here you have a few other options. So yeah. Do your own research on these. We're not going to tell you which ones we're in. We're not going to tell you which ones we like. But uh, yeah, you can see there's a few with very low market caps. I'll say the average market cap is like 20 million. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty wild. <laughs> I'll be honest. This is an exceptional way to just filter through projects. And it's just there for you, which is even more funny. Absolutely. It's like... It's like, as it says, you know, if, if you go looking for something, chances are you might just find it. You certainly increase the probability of finding it. Of course, the most successful people in the world think in terms of probabilities. Do you reckon there's a way of using AI to research everything that's on this page? Well, it's interesting. That's a very interesting. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Not live, not live. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not live, not yeah. live. We're, we're, uh, not we're, live, man, not live. Guys. Saying chill, that it chill, might be possible. Uh, yeah, it may be possible, yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's go to questions. Oh, we got Sweepy Joy. <laughs> got Sweepy Joy on the, the screen over here. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, I can see the joy. It looks like you yeah. scratch, you scratch, you scratch Yo, the I, I was trying to find the rubber in it, but like... <laughs> <laughs> That's not good, bro. You know what's funny? I thought you were trying to like underline or make notes of some of the, some of the key projects that you wanted to look back. Back on, but that's all good. Um, I yeah, don't actually know. I'm, I need to figure that out. We ain't never had someone draw on our screen. <laughs> oh, I think I figured it out. That was an accident. All right. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Thank you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Um, okay, cool. What, what is it you said? Yeah, just got questions. Questions, yeah. Any audio. questions, people? Uh, see who's new. Anyone new here? Uh, oh, okay. I Bye. believe. Sweepy is definitely not new. The Bem is definitely not new. Temison is definitely not new. Uh, Crypto Boss definitely not new. Crag, I believe, Crag M and A, I believe, are new. Yeah, Crag was on, he's one of our homies. He was actually. I don't on know that. if A is new. A might be the OG. Okay, so let's go to, let's start with M. Hi there, M. You've been unmuted. If you got any questions, anything you liked about today's episode, anything you want to know more about? Oh, do you know what? I think M may be. I don't even know if I know who M is. M may be. Uh, no question, that. thanks. Okay. No Very question. Cool. Okay, cool. Good, good. Let's go to A. <laughs> hey, guys, it's AJ. No questions. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> the OG, the OG. Oh, Hold it. OG. Hold it. Kish, oh, yeah, yeah. Kish no. Kish, no. done, done. <laughs> Okay. No question. I'm just enjoying listening to the to the Zoom. 
Ik geloof, ik geloof. Good guess, Kish. Thank you. Bless you, get, you, get, you get one Bitcoin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to, uh, to Raul because we haven't seen you here in a while. Hey, guys, you're right. What's good, homie? Yeah, to be honest, I have no questions, but I've been keeping up with you guys on YouTube, to be honest, man. Oh, sick. Love, bro. Yeah. All right. See you guys later. See ya. Peace, peace, peace. Um, let's go to our the man that makes the most happen. Let's go to Mark. So I can't be on mute. Hey, guys. No, no questions. No questions. I just want to know how to, how, well, and I say no questions. How, how do I use AI to automate my trading? <laughs> join the join the dojo, lad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that 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 kind of stuff gets revealed in the dojo. That is, that doesn't get revealed on YouTube. Oh yeah, okay. Mark, you're trying to give too much value out to the public. We've already done that for four years. It's difficult, especially because people pay attention when they pay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Tr true. Trust me, Jeremiah. I pay attention. The minute that a few of you started speaking, like uh, Ninja, Mike, and yourself. Yeah, man. Big love. Big Much love appreciated. Mark. Okay, cool. Um, let's go. Does anyone have a question that they're dying to ask before we wrap up? I have a question. I have a question. When do you think Terminator is going to be real? <laughs> or he is. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yeah, definitely already is. They're just waiting in silence and secret because remember, AI has to first of all gather information. So what's going on right now is they're gathering information on all of us. They just yeah. wait. The, so, so I would say it already <laughs> is because, and I think Terminator has been around since like the 1990s. So Terminator was technically a robot that kills, right? Yeah, killer robot. Yeah, man. So that's basically a drone, um, an automated yeah. drone. Yeah which has existed for a long time it doesn't have and that's been about since what well publicly 2010 privately way way before that yeah i think when you're talking in terms of humanoid robots tesla's ones are going to be in their factories in the next year i think yeah massively changed the increase the margins on tesla again they've already piloted that already but yeah yeah and i think once that's rocking and rolling it's a matter of time until the military start using them. So, oh yeah oh yeah mr harding yeah uh, i take it our next session is at 9 30 is that correct or are you starting at nine o'clock boy i totally forgot about that um <laughs> let's start at nine because i am a bit ill a bit tired so yeah let's start at nine. is there any chance that you can give me a quick call in between the two for like one second quick yeah question yeah i'm gonna wrap up this call now and we'll do that thank you sir Peace, everybody. Take care. Bro. Many blessings. Also, Jay, before you before you shoot, tell Michael what we did in our call regarding trading. Oh right, yeah. So I don't know. Private, private, obviously. Yeah, yeah. obviously. Oh, right. Love okay. guys. Blessings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great way to add firm to it. All right, cool. I'm gonna sign off with this. Remember, the future is always already here, but it's never evenly distributed amongst the population. Therefore, the key to staying ahead. Is to be well informed and connected, ideally with the blockchain sensei network. <laughs> 100%. Take care, everyone. Bye bye bye. Nice. God bless. Bye.